This is Professor Rudy, and this video is on how to use both user-defined functions and anonymous functions uh, for solving a differential equation using ODE 45. The example problem that we're discussing for this case is the differential equation of motion of a, an undamped pendulum. So after uh, using dynamics to derive the equation, we end up with theta double dot plus uh, g acceleration due to gravity divided by the length times the sine of theta equals zero. Now what's often done is uh, people will use the small angle approximation and assume that as long as the angle is small that theta is approximately equal to the sine of theta and in that case this becomes a linear first order constant coefficient differential equation and we can solve that um, analytically. Now instead of that, we can keep the sine theta and we can have MATLAB solve the equation for us. And we're going to do that using ODE 45. And this is similar to what we've discussed in previous videos. Um, and so we need to apply the same technique. We need to rewrite this system as uh, first order ODEs rather than a single second order ODE. So we can do this by defining the state space format where we have our states defined as the angle theta and the angular rate. And when we do this, we see that the time derivative of the states is then given by, well, theta dot is just our y2 value, and then theta double dot we obtain by rearranging this equation. So we just move this term to the other side, and then we end up with minus g over l sine of uh, y1, which is equal to theta. So what we want to do then is we want to define this function in MATLAB, and so we're going to do that as a function file so we have dy dt equals this function of time and y so we know we need uh, those two variables when we're doing ODE 45 but what we're going to do differently this time is now we know it's a function of the length as well so I'm going to use length as an input to my function because I need that in my equation and so then although g is also in there we can assume that as long as we're sticking with consistent uh, si units um, that shouldn't be a problem g should stay constant so we can define g within the function then we just need to define our two uh, y dot equations so just that dy dt uh, first component is equal to y2 and the second component of dy dt is this minus g over l sine of y1 and then if you remember, we need to also make sure that our result, that our output of this function is coming out as a column vector, not a row vector. So we can use this simple command to ensure that we are coming out a column vector. Now we have this function, and what's interesting is now we've got this input L here that we need to consider. Now what happens is, is we can't just go directly to calling our ODE 45. Now we do... Um, define things as we did before we need our initial conditions so in this case I'm just going to assume an initial angle of 60 degrees which we can see this does not satisfy our small angle approximation so we do want to solve this nonlinear equation and then we'll just start with a, a zero initial velocity so being held at 60 degrees and then released time range I'll go from 0 to 10 seconds and now here's the interesting piece we have this pendulum length that we need to define and so uh, I want this to be something that we can change in our script so that we don't need uh, to define different functions to correspond to different lengths. So rather than editing the function, we can define this length within our script. Um, and so what that will allow us to do, we define this variable. And then ODE45, it needs a function that just takes time and your uh, state space variable y. So what we can do then is we can now create, so we have our function file, but now we're going to also create an anonymous function that's going to include the length in the pendulum. Basically what this is going to do is this is going to plug that length into our function and reduce the number of inputs. So now, um, and this in this case L we said equal to 2 right here, so it's basically just taking L as 2, plugging that into our function and giving us what the result would be. Um, so the only two unknowns that we still have here are t and y. So this new function, myFun, only needs time and y as inputs. And so then this is the type of function that ODE45 likes to see. 
And so then we can have our OD45 call where we give it the function, the time span, and our initial conditions. And in this case, we don't need the at symbol because this is an anonymous function here. Um, we're not directly calling the pendulum function. Um, we've done that here in our anonymous function. So our anonymous function calls this function and includes the length. After that, everything is uh, the same. We can just plot our result here, remembering that the first column of y will be our angle theta, and our second column of y will be our uh, angular velocity. Um, and in this case, I'm just I'm multiplying by this uh, factor, 180 over pi, to convert into degrees, um, although I'm just going to leave my velocity at radians per second. So if we run this, we obtain our result. And so we can see this is the response that we expect from that pendulum, keeping in mind that this is um, undamped, so we're not considering any friction or air resistance. So this will just keep swinging. Um, and so we have our result for theta and omega. Now, you might be wondering, why did we do this? Why do we have this length defined here and doing this anonymous function we, when we could have just had this L equals 2 inside our function? And we could, we could have done that. We could have length defined in here, and then this just always uses a length of 2, and we get our result. But, so what we can do is the reason this is useful is what if we wanted to not just do one particular case? And what if we wanted to do this uh, in a loop? And so, um, in this example, this is going to, same initial conditions, same time span, but now we're actually going to loop through different cases of length. So, and because of this, we can't just have this defined uh, within the function, because we need to be able to do the uh, looping and decide on these different lengths. So, we would, uh, we would have needed to, to define multiple functions for each of these cases to do it uh, the other way, but by using our anonymous function, once we're inside the loop here, all we need to do is plug in that particular case of length. So as this goes through, the first time it'll be 1, the second time it'll be 2, and it just includes those into that function. And then we can just uh, use this anonymous function that we define at each iteration of the loop and send that into our ODE45 solver. And then, um, in this case, I'm going to uh, plot these same things as I have done before, but then I'm going to use the hold all command to continue to plot lines on the same plot. And the hold all uh, is similar to hold on if you've seen that, but hold all will also change the color of the line automatically. And so we do that on both of our subplots. We want to hold on. Um, this statement here, don't worry too much about this, but this is going to let me make a nice legend. Um, it's going to store these values of uh, the lengths into a, a cell array, which I'll explain more in another video. And then once this runs, uh, well, that will be it. So let's run this. So now basically what we did is we did what we did in the first example, where we just did a single case of length, but this time we've done it three times um, in a loop with just that one defined user-defined function. And so using anonymous functions, we can continue to call that same function and plug in different cases, and we can get uh, clearly different results here. Um, so as we increase the length, what we see is that the, um, the time period increases. We get a slower response, which is what you would expect from a pendulum. Um, and so that's a technique that can be used not only with, with ODE45, but with other functions in MATLAB. Um, and so this is a kind of a handy technique. And that's all. Thank you.